So let's check out the Gemini stage. Once again, you'll have the crystal-like floor up top and the flashy multicolored blocks down below. The question mark block that's hidden up above all these sperm eggs is a pain in the ass to get to. Not so much a pain as much as a tedious waste of time. You probably won't get anything that's worth it and there will be plenty of gift power-ups in later levels. So most of the first portion is made up of these eggs, so just shoot the sperm. Wow, that was a poor choice of words right there. Moving on here, we get to the gate to meet Flashman, who takes a lot more punishment with the arm cannon than he did before. Guess the suit really protects him. Doesn't protect him very well from the Gemini laser though. Just be sure to fire when he's right in front of you. You don't want to miss and stand around waiting for it to hit him. After killing him off, you'll run into this body of water where Rush Marine is necessary, but it really doesn't last that long. The rest of the stage is real easy too, just shoot a bunch of these little buggers and you'll meet up with Bubble Man in no time. Just like Flashman, Bubble Man's suit prevents him from being such a pushover with the arm cannon, but water and electricity don't mix, so pull out the spark shock and blast Bubble Man to hell. Just watch out when he's jumping, you're underwater and the ceiling is encased with spikes. One more of these to go, the needle stage, and holy shit, spikes. What a concept for Needle Man. Well, besides the instant death spikes, the giant retractable ones return, and they're more tricky than before. Look at this conjoined pair right here. You have to time the jump pretty precisely not to get hit. As soon as it starts to fold back, make your jump. Use the rush jet to grab these two gifts, an extra life and an energy tank. And then you'll encounter Airman. Both the spark shock and magnet missiles are effective against him, use one or the other. After beating him, use the weapon refill to stock up on your rush jet if you need to, cause you're gonna need lots of it to get across this giant pit. These parachute heads and dragonflies get in your way, but don't spend any time lagging behind killing them, or you'll run out of jet, die, and spend a lot of time killing these pricks to get weapon energy to recharge it. So just move as fast as you can and grab the weapon capsules as you go to keep the jet charged up. When you see two in one place, leave one behind in case you die or you won't be able to make it all the way across. After dealing with some hard hats and needle porcupines, you'll face Crash Man. The hard knuckle is his weakness, and since he jumps a lot and the knuckle travels so slow, you'll have to aim right and might have to change its direction in midair to connect. Thankfully, it doesn't take too many shots to do him in. So after finishing off the four stages, you'll have a final battle with Breakman. And it's the same as the earlier battles, only on a different floor structure. After taking him out, you'll go back to Dr. Light's lab, and he informs you that while you were out gathering up all the elements, Wily stole Gamma. So it's off to the Wily castle to take down the old man once again. In the first Wily stage, you'll get a gift extra life right away. All you need is the rush coil. The hard knuckle blasts these barricades away, freeing up space for this extra life. And holy shit, I've barely even encountered any enemies and I'm getting a whole bunch of power-ups. What the hell kind of wily stage is this? This sniper Joe that stands up here is too high to reach, but the magnet missiles and shadow blades will connect with him. Then these mystery blocks show up, but they're very linear and don't pull any tricks. Just slide through here when the block lines up with it and slide to the other side when the blocks show up over there. We'll get to the boss, which is... a fucking little turtle. This thing is easy as shit, just fire the shadow blades at it and don't let the blasts of water send you up into the mechanical turtle dispenser. The turtles are easy enough even with the arm cannon. It does start picking up speed, but a lot of its health is drained every time you destroy a turtle and it won't take many shots each time. The second Wily stage is ridiculously short. So short in fact that there's no checkpoint the whole time. Even after getting killed by the boss, you'll stop back at the beginning. Climb up the ladder on the left to get up here and grab a gift extra life. Now up here there are a lot of these bear trap activators, or whatever the hell you want to call them, and a lot of them are stationed above spikes so you have to quickly jump from one to the other. The big ass bees will pay a visit while you're trying to avoid being eaten too. Hop into these little havens to clear the bees away before moving on. Then grab the rush jet to fly across the spikes and grab all the power ups. The boss is a variation of the rock monster from the original game. It's not as difficult though. When he's assembling himself, the pieces aren't flying at you at 6,000 miles an hour and you have a little bit more time to attack the eye once he does get put together. Use the hard knuckle on the eye when it shows up, then back away as it disassembles again. Every other time it'll fall apart and all the pieces will shift over almost at once. You can slide into them by doing this weird slide and retreat pattern. You may need to use an energy tank, but don't worry, you should have plenty at this point and there'll be a few more. Speaking of which, right at the beginning of the third Wily stage, there's an E-Tank just sitting here. 
The only thing getting in your way of it is the ability to slide. Could that have been any easier? Up here, the lights go out whenever these things show up, but you can do the same disappearing trick you pulled off earlier with the electricity generators. These moving platforms make this look a lot more complicated than it is. Just jump straight up a few times. The platforms don't move too fast, and the openings are pretty obvious. The boss is another variation of an old Mega Man enemy, a trio of Mega Man clones. Although really only one of them is real and the other two are decoys. They'll keep teleporting sporadically to trick you into having to keep tracking the real clone, but all three will fire plasma at you continuously regardless of what weapon you have equipped. A few shots of the search snake takes this imposter down in no time. The fourth level isn't so much a level at all. After grabbing some power-ups, you run into a series of these monocolored schmucks that chuck condensed piles of garbage at you. Try to avoid it and blast rapidly to clear them out of the way. No particular weapon seems to overpower it significantly. Then you'll teleport to an area similar to Mega Man 2 where you'll have rematches with all 8 Robot Masters depending on which teleportation module you go in. Use the same strategies as last time, only this time use the Needle Cannon on Snake Man and the Spark Shock on Magnet Man. After defeating all eight, you'll go through the gate at the end and gather up some weapon energy. Make sure your Shadow Blade, Spark Shock, and Top Spin are filled up. You won't need to use any of the others from here on out. That's right, I said Top Spin. The fifth stage lasts about three seconds. Grab some power-ups and the boss is right below you. First equip the Spark Shock, back away and fire at the gun in the south central area of the machine. Its energy will drain in no time, but then it'll change forms and get a new set of health. It'll fire plasma shots from above and these fuzzballs of energy or whatever in circles at ground level. Equip the shadow blade, slide under the spike when it's raised and fire them up towards Wily from underneath. It'll drop down on you and take out quite a bit of health but you should have the energy tanks to cover it. After the machine blows up, Wily goes flying and then falls about a thousand feet back to the ground, begs for his life again but... Whoa, what the fuck? Yeah, it was just a robot. Funny how Wily builds a robot of himself and programs it to have the ability to operate a heavy duty death machine. I guess that's how he rolls. So since this was a hoax, you have to go through one more level, which is similar to the last one, nothing but power ups right before the final boss. And this is the peacekeeping robot Gamma. Its attack is predictable and boring as all hell, it just spews a bunch of plasma balls in either direction. Take the shadow blade to it from underneath, and like the last boss it has two forms, but rather than having two sets of energy, it changes forms after half of its energy goes down. Then the head blows off and Wily replaces it with a horned capsule. Its only attack is glowing discs that fly out of its mouth, but you can't reach Wily with any weapons that phase it from below. But lucky for you, a giant hand will pop out from the side that'll try to smash you, but you can hop on it as it's retreating and attack from the side platform. But nothing really works except for the shittiest weapon in all of Mega Man games, the Top Spin and you can take him out in one jump if you do enough spin moves. So Gamma blows up, Wily begs for mercy, and because of the explosion the whole place starts coming down and both Mega Man and Wily get caught under a pile of rubble. A silhouette of someone comes down and retrieves Mega Man while Dr. Wily seemingly meets his demise in the collapse of the Skull Castle. Mega Man wakes up and Dr. Light explains that while he was out of the lab, Mega Man had been left there but had no idea who brought him back. But the whistle that had been left behind indicates that it was Proto Man, the Enigma who had been going by the name Breakman the whole time. So then Dr. Light shows him a scrapbook of all of the robots he created, explaining that there was actually a prototype of Mega Man called Proto Man, essentially making him Mega Man's brother. So Mega Man goes for a jog in the park to reflect on this bombshell. I mean, wouldn't you be taken aback after discovering you had a brother you never knew about? Mega Man looks out into the sky and the image of Proto Man probably is a symbol of Mega Man wondering about the enigma that is his long lost brother. And the round thing that lands on the tree seems to hint that Dr. Wily isn't dead. The song that plays in the background during the scene fits perfectly and in my opinion it's the best overall ending of all the NES Mega Man games. It doesn't completely end there though. The Robot Master lineup and credits roll right after. The ending certainly leaves the door open for another sequel, and sure enough, Mega Man 4 would surface a year later. Mega Man 3 is a great follow-up to its predecessor. I highly recommend it for hardcore and casual fans. The only gripe I really have with it is that the Wily levels are pretty weak. I mean, the middle four revisited levels are actually a lot more challenging. They overloaded the Wily levels with power-ups, and some of the bosses just seemed uninspired. 
but regardless, Mega Man 3 should definitely satisfy anyone who enjoyed playing 2. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time. Thank you.